All of us at Seton Hill University are grateful for the generosity of Hans and Leslie Fleischner, the brother and sister-in-law of noted Holocaust scholar Eva Fleischner, in acknowledging her life's work through the creation of the Eva Fleischner Oral History Project. The first-person video accounts of Holocaust survivors, including Albert Farhi, whose testimony you are about to hear, are challenging to watch, but are an amazing gift to the world that will now exist in perpetuity at Seton Hill University and its National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education. Albert's story and the testimony of other survivors will be accessible to college and K-12 educators so that they may share these oral histories with their students well into the future. As our nation and indeed our world witnesses the rise of authoritarianism fostered by anti-Semitism, racism, and disinformation, it remains important to allow history to speak for itself. We are grateful to Albert Farhi and all the survivors who have participated in the Ava Fleschner Oral History Project. Thank you for making your voices heard and sharing your powerful stories with us. The goal of Seton Hill University's National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education is to educate and integrate history into the present so that we do not forget the tragedies of the Holocaust and so that we as scholars, faculty, and teachers continue to hear the voices of these survivors and share them with future generations. Since its founding in 1987 by Sister Gemma Del Duca and Sister Mary Noel Kernan, Seton Hill Center has made scholarship on the Holocaust and other acts of genocide accessible to educators at every level. The university initiated this national Catholic movement toward Holocaust studies in response to the urging of Pope John Paul II to recognize the significance of the Shoah, the Holocaust, and to, in his words, promote the necessary historical and religious studies on this event, which concerns the whole of humanity today. We're forever grateful to the survivors who have shared their testimonies with us and who speak for the millions who were silenced. My name is Albert Farhi. I was born in Bulgaria. I am now 92 year old. And uh, when I was uh, 12, 13, I was in the Holocaust in Bulgaria. When I was growing in Bulgaria, the anti-Semitism was slowly, slowly penetrating Bulgaria, spreading from Hitler Germany. I would see on the streets, wall, on the houses, dead to the Jews and the Hitler signs, the swastika. And I was feeling depressed, you know, why this anti-Semitism? The first thing that they did is declaration of all what every family possesses, including wedding rings, uh, earrings, everything, money, furniture, and then to give it to the government, they know what you have. I remember my father and mother took these things and put it in the vaults of the National Bank which was very wise. The next step was to mobilize all Jewish male between the ages of 20 and 40 for hard labor as help to the engineering army forces of Bulgaria. 
My father was in this category, but he was officer in charge of the canteen. And one day I was walking with him, he was with the uniform, walking on the street, and one group of German soldiers saluted. And I told him, Papa, if they know that they're saluting a Jew, I remember this vividly. At that time, this was 1941. At that time already, they were killing the Jews in the crematoriums. Among the rules in the law against the, the Jews, it was that on the front door of any Jewish residence, supposed to post with the Star of David the names of the inhabitant inside. One, two, three, four, five. We were five people. Three brothers and the parents. So all, all this was systematic preparation for the deportation. The Jewish population in Bulgaria was very small compared to other countries. It was less than 50,000. 30,000 of them lived in the capital of Sofia. The others were in dif spread in different uh, provinces. And the 30,000 had to go to be spread in different towns, ghettos. So this is the last step before the deportation out of Bulgaria. I remember I was at school and coming from school, ringing the bell, knocking, nobody opens the door. Finally, my mother opened and said, quiet, they're giving the notices for deportation. And I remember when we went in the ghetto in the town of Pleven, the biggest town in northern Bulgaria. And I was 13 and I felt like an adult. Together we went uh, in the middle of the night, the train uh, to Pleven. And we stayed there at least two months. We stayed there because my father succeeded with some top uh, official to permit us to move to another ghetto. It is in his town of birth. So all the relatives, my grandparents, live there and other relatives. So it will be more pleasant for us to be among family members. Jews and Bulgarian together protested. You know, the, they heard about the order that will be coming to leave our homes. The, the order for the first shipment of Jews to the dead camps. We were very close to the deportation, four hours, when the, the train was aborted. The, you know, I did not see the dead 
people, nobody from my family was killed. And then I said, I have to say something. I have something and it is positive. We survived. The Americans were bombed almost every day, Sofia. Everything was mud and broken buildings. Shrapnel from one side of the house went through the other side. So all these things my father repaired before we went home from the ghetto. Even people who were anti-Semites, at this moment, their conscience came. And they believed that we did not know this will happen, she said. We did not really. Means that, okay, we hated the Jews, but we don't want to kill you. You know, we did not believe really that this, this will happen. And, um, and can I help you? Those were the words that I was standing next to my mother. And, um, and this happened. We returned all the neighbors, even the Gestapo, that gave to the Gestapo in their house to, to be. When they saw us coming, they came to their balcony, and, and we in our balcony, very, very happy. It is something temporary, Hitler. You know, the, the German nation is Beethoven, Mozart, you know, they were not anti-Semites, they were proud Germans. There is good and bad people, you know, among any. There is no such thing like perfect person. Everybody is susceptible to indoctrination and hate. <laughs> 